All right, guys, as requested, I'm going to review a video called Women's Life Starts at 18, a Man's Life Starts at 30 by the channel How to Beast. If you're a man and you do not recognize this basic fundamental truth of life, you're f Look, we know that men and women are fundamentally different. Somehow this has become like controversial to say recently, even though I think thanks to people like Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate. Yes, from Andrew Tate, we learned that the best possible job a woman can have is to be a prostitute and the man should enslave the women. I've seen it on more mainstream media spots like Piers Morgan, more people are being reminded of this fact and accepting it. But among the many different differences between genders, you know, women start puberty earlier, their bodies start to develop earlier, and they also tend to be valued by society for things like their beauty, their youthfulness, their innocence. Men, on the other hand, we tend to be more valued for things like our strength, our success, our... The part about puberty is not necessarily true. Nowadays, with the hormones in food, you can argue about it. But even if it is true nowadays, the difference is usually negligible. I would agree that in this slave society, we do value a lot of unnatural things, except for beauty, which matters for men and for women. Youthfulness also matters for both, most definitely. It is really delusional to believe that women don't value youth in men. Strength, of course, because men are naturally stronger than women. Success, it depends on what kind of success he means, probably some nonsense about a career. Courage, um, you should be courageous. Courage. And these are all things that are earned. You know, a woman's innocence and her beauty, those are just given to her. She doesn't have to put in work to get those. Obviously, this is a bit of an oversimplification. There can be women who put in hard work to earn their success or, you know, level up their bodies through hard work in the gym. Yes, you can level up your body with hard work in a gym as a woman. You can become more muscular, which is definitely very attractive, or lose body fat, which is even more attractive, for sure. <laughs> there can be men who are born with daddy's money or who are born with good looks and their life's a bit easier. But on average, if you're a decent looking or an above average looking female, you're gonna be able to get through life comfortably without having to put in hard work. If you're a man, your success must be earned. And I used to think that this sucked so bad. It's not fair, bro. Right? Like, I used to just wish that I could have an easy life where I had a basic salary job. I could come home after work, play some video games, maybe play some sports, just have a, a cool girlfriend to hang out with and be comfortable. Yeah, with your dog also. What kind of a slave life is this guy imagining? Playing video games like a loser after work? Work is slavery? It's as if he was aiming for a slave life all of his life. With Like, I would literally get home from work, lay on the floor, stare at the ceiling just like wishing that a cool girl would walk into my life and complete me and i wouldn't have to do any hard work to make it happen now i know at first this seems kind of like bad news if you're a dude but sneaky it's kind of good news because all the things that we're valued for our grit our determination you know our, our discipline all these things are earned that means that there's no expiration date on when we can become successful if you're a woman you start to get you know 30 mid 30s late 30s your looks start to deteriorate when well, now your value your social value also starts to deteriorate this is where the delusional part kicks in it's a form of coping for men who are getting older Women value beautiful faces and youth just as much as we value that in women. There's a, a time limit on that. For men, there's no time limit. We can put our head down, grind, fail, be rejected, be awkward, be ugly, and we can be like that for all of our 20s. You can't be like that at all. If you are ugly, actually really ugly, not just average, which also doesn't cut it a lot of times nowadays, then you already failed at life you can't get any better. There's nothing that you can do to change it, except for actually literally trying to change our face. Even all of our 30s, and there's still time to, to rise above and become successful. Like there's plenty of- You can become successful. He means that you can become successful in society by uh, having a lot of money, which doesn't even exist. And then that's how you will attract women. No, you won't because uh, they will not like you. A woman can only like you if she likes your body and falls in love with your face because you are your body. If a woman would be together with you because of your money, then she would leave you once you lose this money because she's not into you. You are not these man-made pieces of paper with man-made symbols on it. It doesn't have any meaning whatsoever. She doesn't actually like you at all. She's only using you. Ugly dudes out there who've grinded up their wealth, have a beautiful woman and have... That woman is not beautiful, for one thing, but more importantly, there's lots of clips out there which prove that she looks absolutely disgusted when she touches him for photos, when she has to act as if she actually likes to be around Donald Trump. <laughs> no money on earth can change that. Become successful 
even if it's a bit later in their life. And at some point it hit me that this is actually like very empowering for us. No, man, these guys who are not attractive simply cope and compensate their whole lives and try to become successful in a slave society where a lot of women are brainwashed to go after money, but these women are literally not in love with you. They don't even like you. They don't want to be around you. Us men, this should be like a freeing sensation because it means we get to, to build in darkness. We get to go dark, build our life up over the years. And then later, like we know that the fruits will eventually come. And that's probably my only real regret in life is that I didn't start building earlier, you know, through high school, through college, even just after college, I was just trying to live a comfortable life. Like I said, trying to do minimal homework, just enjoy my time. But once I got to be like 23. Yeah, but that's the thing you didn't enjoy your life you are playing video games which don't bring any natural joy whatsoever joy and happiness can only come from something that is natural you're 24 i got lost in that build phase i started devouring self-improvement books i was reading them i was listening to the audiobooks from you know yes you improved yourself by getting tattoos and uh, lifting man-made weights in a man-made gym for no reason except to cause inflammation in your muscles and to age your body and to look even worse in your 30s Bravo, you absolute freaking slave. Tony Robbins, Mark Manson, Robert Greene. I was consuming as much. That's interesting, uh, Robert Greene. Um, I'm going to show you another video from him. It's very weird that he mentions him because uh, from what I know, he actually completely goes against what he's saying in this video, but we'll see. Much knowledge and information as I could. That's also when I decided it was time to stop being a little bitch and start talking to women. I had been so afraid my whole life of rejection, I barely did it. Then I met, you know, several- The reason you were afraid of rejection is because women are not naturally attracted to you. And that's exactly why you have to go and talk to women instead of them going and talking to you. Real friends like the homie Dave and some other guys in Boston, we'd go out together and, and approach girls at night during the day. We faced that fear over and over and over again until we did not care about rejection. I quit my first career job as a software engineer. Okay, yeah, uh, that's kind of good that you get to the point where you don't care about rejection. I'll give him that. Engineer became a personal trainer. Then I started howtobeast.com, which was a, a written blog at the time and started sharing, you know, my, my different trials and tribulations. I started training in Krav Maga for years, which is like an Israeli self-defense martial art. Then Basically the only martial arts which are actually closer to natural fighting and actually useful to learn. After that, I got into Muay Thai. I wanted to truly be confident in case shit hit the fan that I'd be ready to deal with actual combat. I was trying to find every last corner of weakness in my brain and, and face it head on. I used to be an extremely scrawny, skinny dude. So I started putting work in the gym. I started eating more food and year over year, my body started to improve. I started to build muscle, feel more confident in my body. I you do build muscle up until a point, but what you mostly do is go to the gym two, three times a week, which is what most people do and simply cause inflammation in your muscles over and over again. That's what the pump is. And that's why you go all of the time because once you stop going, you lose this inflammation, which makes you look smaller, which is basically just your body returning to its normal state where it feels healthy and comfortable. And this is the mindset switch. Like this is the flip you have to switch in your brain if you want to become a successful man if you are not given that silver spoon if you are not given those perfect looks you need to flip this switch and actually start to enjoy the struggle enjoy the you're delusional for two reasons if you are not given good genes then you will never be successful naturally there's nothing unnatural that you can do such as getting money which doesn't exist or some career or cars to somehow become successful especially with women which is what he's mostly talking about you will always feel like you failed, and that's true. Secondly, you say that you should enjoy the pain, and then you show clips of you working out where literally your face expression is showing that you absolutely don't enjoy it. You don't embrace it because it's impossible to embrace pain and struggle. Nobody naturally wants to struggle and have pain and torture in their lives. And that's exactly what we can see here in his face expression. He's absolutely miserable. <laughs> Hard work. Enjoy the grind. Look at that face. Is he enjoying working out in any way at all? Oh my God, what an absolute delusional slave. If you're trying to hype yourself up and do different confidence hacks, yeah, in the moment you might feel a little bit better, but the only time you're gonna be truly confident as a man is when you can look back and say, I overcame my fear of talking to girls. You know, I was able to, to, to build my own business or to get a promotion. Yes, you become a real proper man if you build a man-made business, which doesn't even exist, literally 
build an idea which doesn't exist. <laughs> That's what being a man is naturally about. It's not at all being a feminine, absolute slave loser. No, no, no. In my career, I've put the work in the gym. I've learned how to fight. I know that I have the, the evidence. I don't have to trick myself anymore. I'm confident. And again, the beauty- Fight who? Why did you learn how to fight? Who are you fighting in everyday life? What was the purpose? Beautiful news is that 20 years old is not too late. I thought when I graduated college and no longer was I surrounded by hot women that it was gonna be too late for me to have success with girls. 20 is not too late. 30 is not too late. That's for sure true. If you're good looking, yes. You can be 30 years old and good looking and uh, it would be no problem. 40 is not even too late. 40 is almost always too late, over 90% of the time. You would have to be extremely good looking at 40 to still attract beautiful and fertile women. Like I started uploading on this YouTube channel when I was 27 years old. He was 27 there? I checked his age before making this video, he's 33 now. Wow, he aged a lot in six years. He looks like he's around 40 now. That's because of the working out for the most part, for sure. And the funny thing is, most guys I meet in the YouTube game, they're younger or they got started at 21 or 22. Or right now, you know, they're they're 22 and they're like, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to make this work. And I'm like, bro, I didn't even start YouTube until I was 27. You got more time on your hands than you can believe. Like when I was 22 years old, I was still an uh, insecure little jerk off who didn't know what I wanted to do with my life except just be comfortable. And when it comes to women, the beautiful thing is that women prefer dating older men. <laughs> oh my God. That is so incredibly delusional. No, women do not prefer dating older men. Yes, there are some women who do, mostly the ones who have daddy issues, and I would stay away from them. It's not that a younger woman cannot be attracted to somebody who is older as long as he's good looking. There's absolutely no problem with that in general, but they don't prefer it. Women absolutely prefer youth and beauty. They are looking for youthful, healthy, handsome men, not older ones, not at all, really delusional, incredible coping for guys who are older. That's what I thought this video is about from the beginning when I saw the title. They want to talk themselves into believing that your life starts at 30 when you're a guy, and that is not true whatsoever. Come on, just stop it, really. Men, because again, they value the courage the confidence, the success. And no, they don't. Not in the way that he means it anyway. Confidence obviously comes naturally with good looks. You're successful if you're good looking again and courage also. That's how you naturally are if you're biochemically healthy. But what women are looking for are youthful, healthy, fertile, handsome, tall men with a good bone structure. Those are things that we start to finally realize as we get into our, you know, usually later 20s and early 30s. And that's another thing. I was bitter that like the girls who were my age were more interested in the older, more successful men. Bro, there's nothing to be bitter about. That's the reality of the world and you will reap those benefits. There could be some truth to this in the United States, which I assume is where he's from. Women there are, people there in general are a lot more brainwashed, but still, Everybody only wants what is natural at the end of the day. And uh, even though they may be brainwashed by the media to go after men who may be older just because of the money, they will, of course, not love them and they will always cheat on them and eventually leave them. That's not the kind of relationship you should be aiming for. If it's assuming you put in the work once you get a few years older. Like being a man is a gift that is presented as a curse it seems like it sucks that we have to put in this work and that's the mindset shift we have to make we have to be thankful for the struggles thankful for the pain thankful never be thankful for any pain you're going to become as delusional as this guy try to live your life as comfortable as possible and if you do want to earn money and use it for something then use it for plastic surgery try to make yourself look better that's the only way that a woman is actually going to fall in love with you then for the failures because the men who persist and they keep trying to build even though their life sucks and they're failing and losing those are the men who eventually win and they don't just win they win big they get the attractive girl they get all the money they get to live the lifestyle they want most men don't but men who are successful in the slave society and try to compensate all of their lives such as andrew tate who he showed at the beginning of this video will never be successful with beautiful and attractive women at best he will be together with unattractive and ugly women for a few weeks or maybe for a few months, which is the best that you can achieve if you're naturally a loser. <laughs> 
make it that far though because we fall into the 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 lust for a comfortable life too early on before we've earned it and that's when we end up taking some job that allows us to pay the bills but it doesn't really have much of a ceiling for growth that's when we start dating the girl who's yeah she's she's all right but what you're talking about is growing in a slavery which is anti-masculinity but she's not everything we've ever dreamed of that's when we decide just to settle down in the town we grew up or the city we grew up because it's the path of least resistance. Nothing wrong with living where you grew up. People who live where they grew up are usually happier. Distance. Like from the time I started my self-improvement journey when I was 22 to the time I was 27, that was five years of hard work and, and failures. And, and how did you improve yourself naturally over the years? Really, I'm curious because all that I see is a guy who aged his body and became even more unattractive to women. And I didn't have anything to show for it. Yeah, I had started to hook up with some girls here and there. I had two failed relationships. What are you able to show off now? More wrinkles? I hadn't built any real income. If anything, I'd quit my job as a software engineer, quit my job as a personal trainer. I was failing to build an income as a blogger and as a podcaster. Like things probably looked bleak from the outside, but that's when I was, you know, gaining all of this experience in all of these different places that, you know, just one year later when I was 28, the momentum really started to fucking hit and it hit fast. Think about it. When I was 27, I started YouTube. When I was 28, we already had like half a million subscribers. That's also when I started. Yes, because you make content for slaves. Slaves like your content. It's not a good thing to be popular on YouTube. Really, I'm not joking. Edge, which now does multiple millions of dollars per year. When I was 30, I hit 1 million subscribers on YouTube. And since then, the momentum has continued to build and increase exponentially. Y'all know I'm building a crazy house in Austin, Texas. We're building a villa here. In yeah, but how did your actual natural life and happiness improve? At your age in nature, you should have over 10 children. You would be playing with them all day long, teaching them how to hunt and uh, your life would be absolutely fulfilled. Whereas now you look a lot older than you should. And that's probably because of all the stress and your life was so stressful because you chased what? A man-made building, money which doesn't exist, subscribers on a platform, slaves that follow you. <laughs> Spain, I'm driving my dream car and I'm not flexing. The point is there was years and years of failure and pain and then all of a sudden in a five year- You cannot be flexing because you have nothing to flex. You could be flexing if you would show your family with over 10 children. Yes, then you would be flexing. You would be flexing if you didn't have all of those wrinkles and tattoos. Your period, all the dominoes fell into place. All the dominoes fell into place. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right saying, but y'all know what I mean. And the wild thing is that all of this outward success that I have now, it means absolutely nothing to me compared to the grind, compared to those early days in Boston, challenging myself to get on camera, start filming YouTube videos, start approaching girls, going through the pain of, of no one leaving comments. What do you get out of approaching girls? You want to sleep with them? You want to have a one night stand? What do you get out of that? Really serious question. What do you get out of sleeping with a woman with protection? Name one thing. There's literally nothing on my videos of girls not paying me any attention of living in this 400 square foot little studio apartment where i was not even saving money i was just breaking even you know driving this bicycle around downtown boston you could think that this is andrew tate's second brother for real the way he talks is like an absolute slave everything that he aims for in life is what a slave would aim for everything that he aims for is man-made doesn't even exist such as money or it's something shallow, such as approaching and uh, I assume sleeping with the women. <laughs> He's sitting there looking absolutely old because he went to the gym and lifted weights for no reason for many years, got some tattoos, is looking way beyond his age and now he's coping and trying to compensate with money which doesn't exist. And that's how he thinks that he will attract women, even though he will only attract women that will use him because the women will not actually be into him. As I said before, I wanted to show you this clip by Robert Greene, which contradicts his mentality and all of the slaves who follow Andrew Tate also. So when I think of masculinity or I think it means to be a man, I think in terms of, it's very weird, but I have an image of my mind of a particular Hollywood actor from the 30s and 40s. I know that sounds cliched, but let me explain it to you for a minute. His name was Gary Cooper. Now it happened he was extremely handsome, but the ideal, for so long, he kind of embodied this particular ideal. And what this ideal was, he was very soft-spoken. He didn't talk a lot. He wasn't aggressive or pushy, 
but he knew who he was. Exactly, and the men of today, a lot of them, of course, take steroids and have a, a lot of biochemical issues because of the cortisol and adrenaline. But uh, my point is that they are very pushy and that they are aggressive and they believe that this is how a man is supposed to be. But a natural man who has high testosterone is actually rather calm and uh, more so observes life and uh, acts when it is needed, absolutely. But uh, men always didn't used to be the way they are now. And even uh, back in the day when Gary Cooper was still active and uh, people knew how an actual masculine man is supposed to be because most men really were manly, people wouldn't have accepted the kind of man as the guy from this video. Andrew Tate would have been an outcast in a society 100 years ago because it was a lot more natural and people were not so messed up biochemically. He knew what he wanted, he knew what was right, he knew what was wrong, and he stood for it. And he didn't like assert himself and tell everyone you're wrong, etc. But when he was pushed, he, he was extremely strong inside. He knew who, who he was, he was very balanced. And if you're ever going to watch a movie... Exactly, he was healthy. Basically, that's what he's saying. He was a healthy man. You know that you're not just about being aggressive. It's not just about picking fights and going out in the world and kind of hurting people. Exactly. Again, a masculine man doesn't pick fights. They don't look for injuries, pain and torture. Whereas the men, the feminine men of today, who have very low testosterone, like the guy in this video, they want pain and suffering because uh, their lives are so miserable. And of course, Gary Cooper, as he said, was handsome. So he didn't have these kind of struggles, which he naturally had to deal with anyway. It doesn't mean that if you're average looking or even have a deformed face like Andrew Tate, that you have to act that way specifically. Or pushing them around. That's actually a sign of weakness. True inner strength is something that's quiet and that's calm. Right? And so... You exactly. That's when you are a strong and masculine man with high testosterone. That's exactly what he's describing. And that's how men always used to be. And that's exactly why I have to laugh at these modern loser men who try to show off their cars or man-made stuff and all of this garbage, all this coping and compensating. So pathetic all of the time. Ugh. You don't feel the need to push people to hurt people, to assert yourself, to show off, to show how... People who show off, who show off how wealthy they are, how many fancy cars they have, are actually weak. They're actually insecure. Yes, they're actually insecure. That's what he was about to say. Men who want validation and attention from other men by showing off their cars, going to the gym, which is all about appealing to men, are absolutely insecure. And those are not actual masculine men. An actual high testosterone man doesn't care what people think about him, especially other men, because he doesn't feel like he needs to prove anything to other men. And what this guy showed in the video completely goes against what Robert Greene is saying, which is why I was surprised that he showed him. They're actually incredibly immature. And I talk about in the laws of human nature, that when you look at somebody who has very extreme qualities, like bravado, like brashness, like bragging about how great they are, by bragging about how many women they've seduced, by bragging about their fancy cars. They do that because they understand that they have achieved nothing in their lives. They would not go around bragging about how many women they slept with if they would have actually achieved something, such as having uh, one woman and 10 children. They would just have to walk around with them and everybody would know, wow, that is a successful man. <laughs> like that's an actual man but uh, as a loser man you have to go around and brag if you have a deformed face such as Andrew Tate then you have to go on to do all of that because you know that you failed in life they're actually really weak little tiny people inside they're trying to cover up all their weaknesses all their insecurities with bravado but you, as a young man, you don't need any of that. When you see it, you're disgusted by it because it reveals weakness. Exactly. Somebody who is truly strong inside doesn't have to show off, doesn't have to talk. He just really speaks from my heart. Doesn't have to say a lot. That was the whole thing about Gary Cooper. He never talked. You know, I say in Laws of Power, 
always say less than necessary. Weak people have to talk, have to brag, have to talk about all these things. If you're strong inside, you let Oh, this is so right. Your actions do the talking. You don't have to go on websites and show all the great things that your cars, your money, your house. It speaks through your work, through the things that you have achieved, through the businesses that you have started. Obviously, a business doesn't prove anything naturally. It means nothing for you as a man, but uh, he can be right about everything. Through the books that you have read, you don't have to do any talk. Okay, yeah, he has a lot of books in the background. I guess that he's trying to show how many books he read as a man. Obviously, also, man-made books sharing opinions and beliefs, of course, doesn't have anything to do with being a man. Your actions speak for themselves. So let's have certain ideal, certain standards of what we consider masculinity or to be a strong man actually are and to use that sort of guide us through life. So one thing is if you're strong inside, you can take criticism. People who have this kind of fake masculinity, by the moment you try and challenge them or talk to them or say that their ideas are stupid or maybe that they don't know what they're talking about, they get so insecure. And they Again, this is incredibly right. Whenever somebody gives a different opinion than mine, then I read it. And if I'm wrong about something, I'm always glad because it means that what I believed before was wrong, which means that I learned something new. It's pretty much always good to have learned that you were wrong about something because it means that now you know the truth. There's pretty much no downside, but to these people who are weak, it is an absolute attack. Like lash out, they fight back and they yell. We see all these kind of trolls on the internet doing that, right? But if you are truly strong, you can take criticism. You can take a mentor. Exactly. And you would be interested in the truth. And instead of getting aggressive, you would simply find out what it really is. You would ask people for their opinions and beliefs and uh, learn this and that, listen to different sources, whatever, just to find out what is actually going on. Or you can take somebody coming into your life and saying, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to go. You're not doing it right. You need to follow this path instead of the one that you're on, right? The other thing is a true man to me, true masculinity has deep respect for women. Doesn't feel the need to insult them, to push them around, to dominate them. I'm going to stop the video here because I just wanted to show you the part about being a man. As far as respecting women goes, yes, absolutely. Naturally, that's how it should be. But I would uh, assume that men nowadays have trouble respecting women because they don't respect themselves. It starts with how they dress and there's a lot more to it. So if women are not going to start respecting themselves, then I wouldn't expect much to change in the society. But as far as how men are supposed to be, he's very correct for the most part. And really, he's just talking about male nature, about actual masculine men. And that's how men used to be. And we are entering a generation where men are just, well, like I said, it's just disgusting and pathetic. Thanks for watching.